Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 43, Cooking with Geek. In this episode, we have water batteries, laser pistols, and don't panic. Welcome to episode 43 of Let's Talk Geek. Um, with us today, we have uh, Talana Simpson. How's it? Uh, your website, uh, onematchstick.com. Dot Coza. Dot Coza, sorry. Yeah. And into coaching dot Coza as well. Into coaching, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, and on Twitter at, at Talana. That's right. Cool. How did you get that? She was quick. I was on early. Oh, uh, okay. Very long ago. <laughs> yeah, we were yeah. talking about that the other show. Uh, th- there's a singer common. called Talana. I think she's very sad with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you haven't had any offers for it? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> then we have the usual culprits as well. Stuart Allen, uh, Jan Vermeulen from my broadband. Howdy. And Barry Reed. We don't get from... Okay, we're not... Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, we're not, we're we're not, not cool enough, dude. Okay, yeah. where are you from, Stuart? Victoria. <laughs> 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 The reason why you don't is you, I've asked this question and Harry says, well, don't, don't say. Um, yeah. If you want to know where and exactly what we do, go back to episode one. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right. Um, we'll just friend us on Foursquare. Yeah. Stalk me properly. Uh-huh. <laughs> With his love. <laughs> cool. A um, couple of events coming up. Um, we've got a Bikes Geeks on Wheels bike run mm. on the 21st of March. Uh, from Thunk's office to why, Soweto. Why does that sound like a recipe for disaster? <laughs> it's a bunch of like unfit geeks riding bicycles. No, 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 motorbikes. Mm. Motorcycles. Oh, okay. Well, that <laughs> explains <laughs> everything. All right. No, that's fine. <laughs> I was about to say, like, this can't <laughs> end well. Can't end well. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to be hard. <laughs> God, break. <laughs> Carry on. Where's, where's Thunk's <laughs> office? I don't know. Thanks Looking it's there, it's, there, it's by <coughs> Northgate. Okay. I know it's somewhere in Johannesburg. What's oh, that okay. comedian that works there? What's his name? Um, Don Packett. Don Packett. He did that. Have, have you seen yeah. the rip-off that he did of uh, Adrian Bach's? Uh, um, yes. Uh, you know, he Mr. Do you South won? Africa. Do you he won? won. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for him. <laughs> 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 yes, that was funny. <laughs> was cool. you know, he actually wrote a blog, I, b- I believe, about... Um, I did a bachelor thing. Yeah. Yeah. He oh. withdrew his blog. And I'm still going to find out one day when I meet him. I'm going to ask. W- who, Don oh, okay. Packett? Or mm. uh, oh, okay. He wrote a blog about my bachelor thing. and then <laughs> Obviously, got a lot of complaints or somebody said, no, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> did you re- at least read it? I did get to read it. Someone got it in the RSS feed and sent it for, for to me and said, okay. look, it was there and then gone. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, yeah, but it's all, all these things are on start dates, www.stardates.co.za. Run by a good friend, Jan Els. Yeah, Jan Els, who's yeah. been on a couple of shows and part of the LT Afrikaans show. Yes. So any events you guys have or want to add, just send it to us and we'll, we'll get them added hey, for He's you. actually got some cool stuff on there. He puts mm. all the games and the movie releases. All the movie releases that are coming out. Okay, that's um, cool. Some cool stuff there. Yeah, no, all the not, cool not, stuff. Not just movie releases, the geeky movies. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, things like so that. There's not going to be... Like things like Tron was on there. Yeah. Uh, Does anybody know Paul? when... Looks funny. Though. Does anybody <laughs> know when uh, Cowboys and Aliens is coming out? Later on in the year. Because yeah, that looks cool. It's actually pretty cool. But you know what looks Sounds cool that's cool. coming? <laughs> you know what looks cool that's starting on Friday? Paul. Paul. Paul, what's Looks very it's cool. Alien. It's oh, Simon oh, Pegg. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Um, Simon Pegg in them. Yeah. No, no, I've seen the, I've seen the uh, trailer. trailer. Looks very uh, cool. Uh, fr- from an undisclosed source who's actually seen it. Yeah. Apparently it's awesome. Okay, cool. Very cool. You know... Careful who you take. It is a bit crass, though. Yeah, well. It is a bit what? Crass. Oh. <laughs> oh <well. laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> it's a bit below the belt, Barry. Yes, I know exactly yeah, what cool. you're talking about, Tim. Right. <laughs> um, okay, then also on the 28th of March, Monday, there's a Momo Tick event for Android developers. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it's about, but something about they've got some venture cappers coming out. Okay. If you're in Android development, you can go check out. Get your elevator speeches ready. Yeah, um, but they did say that they'll let guys chat to them, up, put up stands, and, and, and get like five minute meetings with these guys. Right. So, so five times elevator speech, sweet. Cool. <laughs> um, then you should show them your your boobs and bombs. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> boobs and explosions. Oh, yeah. Boobs and explosions. That was the <laughs> most cool app ever. Why <laughs> didn't they Why didn't, didn't it it on the app store? <laughs> 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 anyway, 
Come they on. didn't like the word boobs. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen? Problem. Have you seen? That was their only problem. Have you seen some of the apps that <laughs> are in the app store? You're going. Have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean there wasn't anything bad in the app. There wasn't anything showing. It was just cool pictures of boobs and explosions. <laughs> <laughs> but it was yeah, and it was rejected for the word boobs. Nothing else. C- have you guys not converted it to Android yet? It might work. No, but I mean, have you seen some of the names of the apps in the App Store? The even the, I uh, haven't the looked Apple that App much. Store, way worse than our name. But whatever. Oh well, stuff you Apple. Steve, come on, <laughs> S- Steve's your homeboy. <laughs> well, Steve's not uh, vetting my app. <laughs> some dodgy. O- yeah, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> God <laughs> complex. But, but he's, fo- he's following Steve's uh, <laughs> guidelines. Um, and then the other one that I'm actually quite interested in is Tech Central's doing a pub quiz on the 12th of April. Oh, that would be awesome. I want to go to that. Are you still here? When? 12th of April. Next month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We must make a night of it. Yeah, we sort of have a team. Oh, screw you guys. I don't even... Uh, <laughs> I, I thought you were gone. I'm leaving. Sorry. <laughs> <Who's> <laughs> we, we can. I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was going to ask. Oh, oh you. No, it's his name. You've got to go. You've got to be sorted, you know. <laughs> well, Stuff uh, you're you leaving tell. the country. You said a month's time. That was. No, I told you I'm leaving at the end of April, beginning of May. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We can Dude, make, I'm a sure we'll sure make a plan. How many, yeah. how many people in a team? Four, four on a team maximum. I don't need you. And I bet you he's in your team. No. no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Our team's going to be way, way cooler than his team. I'll wear my cool shirt. <laughs> Is that the one with the... Uh, it says, the, the, I'm the, awesome. The vest with holes in it. Hey? <laughs> That's my wife beater. <laughs> All right. Cool. Into the topics. Um, Thank goodness. <laughs> Oh. Okay, the you see, this is the problem when I'm not in control. I have more to say. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. So. First uh, topic tonight is this very, very cool cookbook um, that one of the ex Microsoft uh, CEOs has made. It's basically six volumes, but it's going to cost about 6,000 Rand. <laughs> sure. That sounds reasonable. A, yeah. <laughs> it fits right in Microsoft. Does it come <laughs> with the chef? It's no. going to cook for you. Um, it comes with a copy of Windows yeah. 7. The, this yeah. is, look, this is not your cookbook you're going to buy your mother, though. This this is, they, they st- like cooking with liquid nitrogen. They go down to the exact and science cookbook. Oh, thank goodness. Do they have proper directions? Everything. Because, dude, have you ever tried to bake something? But like with reasonably complex directions. They <coughs> chop and change um, they don't. They don't follow a sequence. So it'll like break the eggs and then they hop over to mixing dry ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, what the fuck are you supposed to do with now the broken eggs? Yeah, like I'm just broken. <laughs> now what? Yeah. <laughs> they don't tell you what. They're to in do. a glass. They're in a glass. Now what? <laughs> anyway. So. Um, no, but this also goes goes down to the science. So this is actually what happens when you're cooking meat. This that is what is happens cool. when you. They they were talking about how they've cut um, all these machines apart to show you what's going on inside the like the microwave. So this is the magnetron. This is how the magnetron works. This is what why it cooks. I still want to know why it's so expensive. Um, because it's it's going to be very li- not, not very few people going to buy it. That's it's it's a, very, a very well, well now, dude, yes. and it's two and a half thousand pages. Well, look how many people buy Windows, and look how much that is, <laughs> dude. It's two and a half thousand pages of cookbook. No, yeah, well, think of like a big book. Uh, th- this five hundred pages, th- four books, it's six cost volumes. Six grand. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm still not paying. <laughs> no, I'm still paying the volume almost. Yes, yeah, so we'll have pictures and all the rest of it. Um, but also, that, that, like, go to the level of talking about how to make the perfect hamburger. Now, the, the, so the problem is, normally when you cook on a griddle or something like that, um, it dries out. So what you actually do is you take it and you put it in a plastic bag, the meat, and you boil it at first. Now, that gives you a little thorough cooking. You cook it down to the perf- perfect temperature. Then you take that and you drop it in liquid nitrogen. <laughs> then you take it from there and you put it in the... Uh, uh, Molten lava. Something else you can't do. This is a liquid. N- I mean, this is a yeah. the perfect hamburger, yes. right? By whose standard? Um, because ba- basically, it gives it moist all the way through, and by the only f- they flash freezing the just the outside, so it's crispy on the outside, and you get that flavor. Yeah. But then the, the texture is so moist, and, oh, and yeah. stop saying that word. <laughs> <laughs> Moist. <laughs> I hate that word so much. Okay. No, that sounds cool. It sounds very there cool. Used to be a, I understand. There yeah. used to be a cool website called Cooking for Engineers. Um, but I see that's, it. Is that not still around? No, I think it's. I saw it was gone. I tried to look for it the other day and it, w- it was gone. Huh. Um, but um, there the guy would put proper units. So it wouldn't be like a cup of flour 
What yeah. the hell is a cup of flour? What? Big cup, small cup? It's like so many grams <laughs> of okay. flour milled to this specification of, <laughs> of um, grain size. There we go. Stew. <laughs> a cup is a specific measurement. Yes, I know, but it's when you're looking in the cupboard for a cup of something. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, why uh, buy that's what like I'm saying. So give me grams. Give me yeah, grams, grams milled to this specification of grain size. Okay. That was the kind of book. And it was, it was the, the website. It was the quite good fun. Book. Yeah. My Fiverr what? account is getting a bit out of control. Is it? Are you making lots of fives? Well, the problem is I'm getting like lots of orders, but I don't feel like doing any of it. <laughs> what happens when you don't decide not to do it? Well, then you get a bad rating and then like they cancel their orders. And then when you do put something cool up that you want to do, nobody buys it because they look at your rating and they go like, well, this oak never comes through. So I'm not going to buy from him. But the question but is, do you care? <laughs> and that changed the topic quite quickly. <laughs> Sorry, like I, I just I just saw all the emails coming in from Fiverr, and but that, that's the point. You know, it's, I can register for this since it's fun to do, and at some point you get bored that's with it, thing, and then yeah. it's like, eh. dude, five bucks is not exactly five dollars. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's still not. Yeah. but that's the thing. You know what? It, it's fun to do when you've got nothing else to do, and you don't feel like reading Wikipedia. You know Fair what I mean? Enough, yeah. So, and it's yeah, you, know, you, you but you know, it comes in phases. So you're like, ah, oh, I want to do a father thing. And then you do one and then you get over it. And then you <laughs> kind of go, well, now nah, I don't want to do it. But it's still on then. You, you can't take it off. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Yeah. Sorry. Know. Off topic once again. <laughs> it's fine. What's our next story? Talana. Um, just your claim to fame, effectively. The one matchstick thing and all that. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to find your name tag. There we are. <laughs> How what did it come about? Um, yeah, can you tell us a story? Um, well, it's almost five years ago now. <laughs> I heard of a guy, Kyle McDonald, a mm -hmm. ca Canadian, who was trying to turn a red paper clip into a house. And he'd done a couple of trades, and it just, it just blew me away, that story, and that this, the possibilities of, you know, if you can do that. So I said, looked around, and said, well, I need an office. I've just started my business. I've got a matchstick. Let's see if I can turn a matchstick into an office. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. Um, and it, and you which I thought if, if I was one of my challenges in starting my business, I'm sure other entrepreneurs do. Also, you know, what holds them back is where, where do I start my business? So I actually want the offices big enough for startup entrepreneurs. So I can give them a space to, to get their businesses okay, going. Okay. Um, for, for what reasons are you going to do like a, what's the open space stuff that they do in the UK? Or, or I, I suppose kind of, it's kind of like developing as, as I go, the, the idea. It's not... It's less of a business incubator, more of a just you really want to start this business, and but you need an office. It's a, it's a kind of business that you actually mm. need an office. You can't do it from your garage. Mm, mm. Here we go. I paid for this office with a matchstick. Here's space for you. Now create, you know, create your uh, business. Uh, the ones I'm talking about cool. in the UK, they've got um, it's effectively open spaces. And what you can do is you can rent. Effectively, they've got spaces to work on. And they've got internet there and coffee and all that. Mm. And you can rent it by like half a day or a day or a month. And you get all the different people who come in and work there. Yes. Um, and what they said actually works great because you get a lot of cross-pollination yes. of ideas. Yeah, there's a, a few of those in Joburg. Oh. That, that I know. I met a lady recently, one in actual town in, in the design district. Oh, okay, cool. And I'm keeping in to go and visit her. I know about a year ago there were some guys trying to start some. And, and yeah, then they disappeared. They disappeared. Yeah. I, think. Yeah. People I have a cool here. idea for something that I actually want to pass by you guys, but I'll... Talk about that later. Okay. <laughs> and, then was, and then we can say something. What was your first trade from the matchstick to you? To an ordinary green ballpoint pen. <laughs> and, and where are you now? Um, now I'm on my 10th trade, which involves 375 spring leaf t shirts. And I have 90 left to trade. So basically, I was, yeah. So I traded up and up and up. And uh, with the, the 375 t shirts, I decided to trade them individually with 375 people. And yeah. Yeah. So I've traded cool. a whole whack of them and 90 to go. So How's so it what going? Is, what is the going what is the most valuable item that you've traded for a t-shirt? Because I presume that's what you're trying to aim for, is trying to get more value. Um, yeah, community. So so the, the nature of the deal I made with Spring Leap is, is basically I'm, I'm, have t I'm trading the t-shirts for cash. People oh, are buying okay, them. Yes, yeah. But what people have been quite creative and that they've said, I'm not going to give you cash. I want to give you my services or product. So okay. on actually on Sunday, there were four of us decided to take up um, a photographer's offer. So we had a, a photo shoot <laughs> and we all split the cost and we're going to pay him for eight in t-shirts, eight t-shirts for the, the getting some oh, nice photos cool. done. Cool. Very cool. nice. So uh, I think that's one of the, the bigger value t-shirt yeah, three-way so trades. We had some nice party. What was, uh, 
Yeah, so that was also the swarm party was also an attempt to try and tell the teacher. I thought selling teachers would be easy, hey? <laughs> Sorry, no. how many did you say you had again? 375. Yeah. So what it did is, yeah, we, we threw Africa's first swarm party l- last year. Yeah. And VIP tickets included one of my T-shirts. Yeah. So that's helped me. I think I, was, uh, I think I traded 60 T-shirts, about 60 or 66 yeah, through I know that. Me and Barry were both there. Yeah, Look, I you got guys were awesome badge. sorts. Awesome yes, sports. Barry, I hate <laughs> you because I'm one of the, I, I didn't get it. There were a few people apparently, yeah, some technological Ooh, thing yeah. in it. Yeah, Foursquare was failing at that day. It was just not it behaving not working well. and our internet wasn't that hot. Barry, turn your phone off, please. Well, can you hear this? Yeah, I can hear it, yeah. Um, um, but so yeah, but it sounds yeah. like it's going well. It sounds like you're quite close to your... Yeah, I believe. <laughs> Do you have an estimated date you're going to be finishing or anything? Uh, I'd hope to finish the teacher at the end of February, but here I am still with 90 to go. <laughs> How many have you got left? 90. 90. Zero. Um, so, yeah, I do. What's exciting for me is, is as soon as I get to finish through the T-shirts, I reckon I've got three or four more trades to actually get to the office. Oh, okay. So, cool. And I'm on a mission. I want to try and do that by so the anniversary of it, which is the, oh, my gosh, the 12th of June, I think it is. So in June, I want to try and actually get to the offices. So... So how, how much do you yeah. need for offices? Like, have you, like how much I mean, what? Wh- wh- how much money do you need for um, offices? Well, try not to go with money. I know yeah. I sort of am now, but um, it's more about the, the much perceived trade value. For, yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever I have, the person who has office space will hopefully yeah. want that and they will give me mm. rent for five years, for example. Okay, or, all right. Yeah. Or the actual... Or transfer. Or the actual yeah. transfer. Yeah. That, that's first price. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what... What what sort of trade would you make for that though? Like a car or like an expensive car or something? I have as no idea. As yeah, a point of interest, what, what did yeah. the guy who, who got his did he get his house? Yes, he got it. And what was what was his final trade? From what to Be- house? Before that was a, a a role in a movie. Hmm. You got a role yes. in a movie. Yeah. yeah I vaguely remember. Yes, and you traded um, some actor or something. Or so it was the guy from LA Law. He's. Be- I don't remember LA Law. Yes, and I remember LA Law to a bit. Quite a while ago. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but yeah, um, he was directing some movie, so he offered a place in the movie, and ended up an actual town in in Canada offered him a house. And what they did with the the role in the movie, they did like a um, the whole, anyone who wanted to to audition for it came into the town, and there was a whole big auditioning. And then oh, that's quite clever. So they got a lot like of advertising like for the what's this? the town. Yeah, well, that's cool. No, very um, cool, very cool. Canada, well, what's been your, your most interesting yeah. trade so far? Most interesting. So the, the one, I don't know, it depends what it, what's interesting is, but for me, the one that really, really touched my heart was one of the T-shirts. Um, there's a guy in Cape Town. I've never met him or haven't met him yet, but he offered me 60 books and they, they aimed at like school leaving children to help, to help them with career guidance and life skills and that. And it's all he wanted was a T-shirt to pay for the courier. Basically, oh, okay. to, to send them to me, but I, wanna, I don't know what I'm gonna do with 60 books. Yeah, <laughs> and this guy, kind a friend of mine who's, who started up, it's called the Bookshelf Project. He goes into informal settlements and and creates literally bookshelves, fills them with books, and teaches. Oh, very ki- cool. Ki- um, what kind of books? Just <coughs> general, whatever yeah, so they can aim, get. Aiming at children, so you know that was one of the key key skills that you need. If you don't develop reading very young, you always battle it. There's something happens in the brain. So I, went to I was reading a very interesting, watching an interesting TED thing. Yes, it's about. Your yeah. brain, it's its the fact, your brain, it, I'm trying to explain it now, it's well, noisy. Um, and when you start learning it, it basically learns the correct patterns, you want to call yeah. it that. Because apparently we're not naturally meant to read. The yeah. brain is not geared to read. So it is a skill that needs to be developed and certain certain neurons need, need a certain connection to be made. And that happens best at an early age. Mm, mm. So... That's why when, when you know don't get that skill early on, you you battle with learning. It's because with learning everything is about mm. about reading, language. Reading, reading and so reading. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's going in and, and just out of his own world, just started to to help develop a culture almost, and also teach le- reading, and learning yeah. skills. So he heard about these books and was like, oh, I love them. So, but he didn't be no, you know, a small little charity doesn't have the money. So I eventually found someone else who r- wants to remain anonymous, my anonymous angel, <laughs> who put up the cash to pay for the T-shirt. So the 60 books got sent to me, which he then distributed in some of his bookshelf projects, which he believes is impacting about 700 children. And that Very for me cool. is just... Is 
You made a so, difference. So yeah, mm. yeah, very, very that one cool. T-shirt can have that impact. <laughs> yeah, That's seven hundred cool. children. In in IRC, we have an offer for uh, one T-shirt for a handmade chainmail bracelet. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds very interesting. Cool. So, so what happens now with what we call, this is what I call three-way trade? Is so, if you can send me some details, who's it? Ca- Catabug. Catabug. I think. Then I need to blog about it, and then we need to find someone who wants that handmade chainmail bracelet. They'll put up the cash because they don't want a T-shirt. They would rather the bracelet. They'll put up the cash for the T-shirt, and then we get oh. the T-shirt okay, sent. Yeah. So they, they buy the T-shirt, so and then effectively they trade the T-shirt for the chainmail. Yes. Cool. And they pay for it. So. Ah. Very cool. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Cats out the bag. <laughs> what? The person doing the one that wants the trade is my wife. <laughs> 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 but it's awesome. Thank you so much. It's, um, cool. Yeah, All right. pop me an email with the details and we'll we'll trade. Cool. Uh, was there anything else you want to mention about that? No. Nice. Let's just if anyone wants one of my t-shirts because now I've got if we can find someone for the the bracelet, I'll have eighty nine to go. It must be a lot of work though. Like, is it more work than you thought it was going to be? Yeah. Than when you started, yeah, could yeah. it not be easy to just go to the bank and get a loan for the offices? <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be as fun, and okay, I would yeah, not, yeah, have, I would not so have learned as much, and right, I would so not have met the, the, the people I've met. It's been, yeah. it's, it's been phenomenal. So that's the point of a dream. So or, or, I think so the no learning is just, like, oh. yeah. you, you're doing sort of um, as, as your job and what you're wanting to do in these offices. Um, it's that coaching, effectively. So a lot of I would imagine from from these things you've learned and you've got experience now. Yeah. For that. Yeah. I mean, I'm just learning about negotiating. Jeez, I feel like I can negotiate anything. <laughs> <laughs> anything is negotiable. We should send so you to a market. And, and <laughs> with me because, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and just the whole barging, I've actually t- brought it into my life now. Um, I barter for things. Oh, very I cool. went into a shop and said, I'm not going to pay for these rock climbing shoes. We're going to barter for them. And I walked <laughs> out of there with them without paying. <laughs> very cool. Oh, well, so I, got a, I got something today for bartering as well. What did you get? I, I got a hot air solder station. Oh, is it? Yeah. Jeez, for that's awesome. <laughs> for bartering my skills. I fixed some v- guys VGA cables. Yeah? Sweet. And that's oh, with a soldering iron. I yeah, assume. no, no. And then it's, this is for hot air work, refill yeah. work, for yeah. oh, okay, VGA okay. packages and stuff Jeez, like that. Jeez, we need to talk. I need you to and pick something for me. No, we'll, we'll talk, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, then the guy, I said to him, yeah, no, I needed, I needed, he was going to, to China, and I said, oh, well, while you're there, just check if you, you see, see a price for one of these units. And then he brought one back. Okay. So that's cool. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's awesome. So you just uh, bring oh, sorry. Mark. Yeah, cool. All that's right. That's uh, very cool. Cool. We can move into the next but one. But yeah, I would have thought it would be a lot more work than. Yeah, I can imagine it's quite a bit of work. So yeah. yeah. But I know you're running all over the country half the time, I see. I am. Lots of four square. Mm-hmm. And I think people don't realize I also have a full time job, full time business that I run. And then, mm. as I said to you, I, mm. yeah, how people no, have no regrets in by day and I trade a matchstick by night. <laughs> 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 yeah. So the, the eventual office spaces are going to be for tech-orientated companies um, or Not necessarily, just, just anything. I actually was thinking of doing almost like a, can we think, what's the show on Sunday nights where the singing, what's it, the American? Idols. Idol, idols. I wanted to do like a, almost like an idol kind of thing. So entrepreneurs who want to be part of the space, I was thinking that, you know, they have to, to oh, YouTube themselves them and then you guys can help me vote, you know, my fans, people cool. are following me. You help me vote for the who, who gets the space. Who do you think deserves it the most? Or? Yeah. And oh, so okay. that's, that's the kind a good of idea as well. Like a whole yeah. Yeah. Well. yeah. Mm. If you don't come through, you get kicked out. We vote again. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the tribe has spoken. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be quite fun. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't like to limit things. It's whatever. We'll, we'll see who, who comes. At the, the time, you'll see time. what's available and who's running around. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's cool. cool. All right. Into something slightly more techy. Um, <laughs> low power TV. Or, or t- TV that can be powered by awesome. solar, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, it's quite cool. Um, uh, S- Samsung, Samsung made it. Yeah. And they were dimming. It's effectively, this TV needs doesn't need to be plugged in. So it can fully charge with ambient light inside a house. Yeah. And that's the one that's transparent. Yeah. Yeah, that's the did big thing. Did you, did you see like some of the applications they, they mentioned in that article? Yes. Like for, for windows in uh, shops. Yep, and heads-up display uh, on vehicles and things like, like that. It's br- perfect. Yeah. Oh, that would it's work brilliantly, really yeah. <laughs> You're not going to watch your TV on it. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I want have got no backlighting. The thing, it's not yeah. backlit. It's not backlit mm. at all. So it's it's not really a TV. But the video looks it's cool. so impressive. Is it like hey. a minority report style display? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. 
Um, but it's it's completely <coughs> you could have it disconnected. You could almost you install them in shop windows and things like that with no. Yeah, so you look through the window, but you've got all this like. As you say, like heads up. S- uh, with, but yeah, you don't need power to, to the unit. So for advertising and for... But I mean, if you, I guess for outdoors, if you put a, a reflective uh, coating on the back, um, you could get yeah. some pretty good contrast ratios from it. And um, you'd still be able to view it quite easily. How does that work if, if you can just put a reflective thing on the back? Won't that sort of mess with how the TV works? No, because mm. your light will be passing through it, reflecting off the back, very shiny surface and coming back through the image. Okay. Yeah. And that's what's going to give you that. Um, and the charging will be coming just from one side. Yeah. Or so actually, the charging will is probably be more. But I don't know. That's another thing. What it is solar really, though, sorry, Stu, yeah. is just they've taken an LCD TV and they've just taken the LCD panel and they're just using yeah. the LCD panel. And put a solar panel in it. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. It's, but, I mean, the solar panel, is the solar panel built into the yes. actual Display. screen? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So all it's right. a transparent, transparent solar, solar panel. It's a transparent solar panel as yeah. well. And then so they've just taken all the backlighting exactly, and, yes, and stuff yeah. off. Yeah. Which is which is clever, but it's it's a cool idea. And I think really the hard technology lies in making the solar panel transparent versus the power saving on the LCD. Mm. I, I'm very surprised though that they don't already do this a lot more off a lot uh, uh, more often. Just you know to have that transparency. I think it's the solar panel technology to make the solar panels transparent. Mm. No, no, no. I'm not talking about with solar panels. I'm just talking about plugging them in. Oh and yeah, you can get on those. Haven't I you seen the guys that mod their laptops for it? No, no, no. Oh no, you must have a look. Oh, the Oaks mod the laptop. They so laptop. it's like a see-through screen. See-through screen. Okay. Yeah. You just don't see much of it. That's what I'm saying. Yes, yeah. 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 The problem it, is it's it looks the, very cool. Yeah. But what you could also sure use it is as people wander around, you could sort of effectively alter their clothes. Oh yes, you could do yeah. some really so, you know, cool stuff they there. You, you, they want to like advertise a dress as you, you stand in front of it and takes a picture of you. And then it puts a picture there with you wearing the dress. Dude, just imagine taking a hacked connect. Some hairstyles would be awesome if they could do that. <laughs> just, uh, just imagine taking a hacked connect, building a little demo. and a yeah. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should just shut up right now. <laughs> 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 Stu, are you, you going to do it? <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> just taking like a hack connect and building like an interactive display at a shop. Or yeah, something yeah. just for mm. people walking past all of a but sudden this has nothing to do past, with transparent screens though because you wouldn't no, use transparent screens but what i'm it. saying is just think for I advertising in a store though. hacked connect taking as people walking past models the person yeah. sticks them on the display and puts the clothes stores on that person mm. 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 stores clothes the stores clothes yeah. on that yeah. person as yes. you walk past and all of a sudden there's you in the window in. with the stores clothes on you and you got visual recognition. Uh-huh. And then if you really scale it, you, you make the person look a bit by. thinner. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. Of course you'd do that. I know. Yeah. But uh, hey, that's a that's a good idea. And you put you, you put this virtual button on them and you just click buy. buy. Yeah. Yes, buy and then here. It, and then it cross references your facial recognition with your credit card number stored on some database somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very <laughs> but I talk, I think talk, that could be quite cool. S- since you're talking about Connect, we should talk about this video, uh, college humor video, which was just <laughs> Brilliant. I'm just going to pull it up quickly. Um. Oh, this was quite classic. And disconnecting its power source seems to have only enraged. I'm going to do further. something with a transparent um, screen now. now um, because I'm basically, this is some guy that did some, uh, it's a comedy thing where he, he pretended that he got a connect. He made his, he hacked his connect with all the connect hacking, hacking going on now. And he made it sentient. Yeah. But, so, but <laughs> with all the usual sentient problems, it decided to now basically wipe not be turned you, off no. and wipe out humanity. <laughs> so like this one bit of it's like, oh, well, I was planning a later version to like add in, you know, some uh, conscious and some rules not to kill people, etc. Well, I suppose it's a bit late now. <laughs> yeah. um, it'll be in the show notes. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's awesome. It's very, very good. Um, jumping around a bit then. Um, so, yeah, I think the TV it could be fun stuff for that. Yeah. I, I'm mm. watching a video now. I want to do something with this. Could I don't you, know you what can, I want to do, but I want to do really something. You can really quite easily do it. Just grab an old LCD. No, no that's what I want to do. It. Just be careful. That's the connects can be a bit sensitive. That's yeah, all. yeah. But it's really That's so, exactly it's what I want to do, but I'm do, just yeah. trying to think what I want to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I know I want to do something, but I don't know what I want to do. Hmm. All what, that free what time. What movie was? Oh, that was like... um. Dude, I'm going to have loads of free time soon. That was like... 
Iron Man with the sh- with the s- display. Yeah, in the shower. yeah, 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 yeah. You could build one of those. Yeah, oh, there we go. And so I can read all my RSS stuff in the shower. Uh, in the shower. In the morning. shower. Yeah. And, and, and with the connect, no, no, Barry. We'll put it on the other side of the glass. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's perfect. And with the connect, you don't need to touch it. You, you can. <laughs> yeah. I'm not ready to report it. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I must be able to get like some sort of capacitive you do. touch screen panel. RSS has got them, dude. Exactly. Uh, they got stick on. Co- uh, they got stick on resistive yeah. touch. Yeah, um, screen, you don't want to have capacitive touch because the water will screw around with. Oh it. yes, yes, yeah, we've actually noticed yeah. that we did a, a motor. Well, we um, Harit, who's been on the show before, uh, did a review of the, of the motor defy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, my my brother. Yeah, my bro, um, it, which is called just called the MB five to five in South Africa. We're not calling it the defy for some reason. Um, I think it's basically because the the one that you get <coughs> on Red Bull Mobile um, apparently has all the motor blur stuff stripped out. Oh, okay. Something like that. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, bottom line is we got the one with Moto Blur on it, mm-hmm. and um, it he dunked it in water to, yes. to test it, and you, the screen doesn't react. Yes, yeah. It just yeah, stops until working until you dry it oh, off. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you guys know the Olympus Tough camera? No. Man, that's my next camera. Is it? Is it? Had, yeah. So I got a friend Ray. He's gonna. Do, he's an adventurer, and he. He gets given this equipment to test, and literally he throws it. And then we're in restaurants, and he just throws it, and all the you know waiters are going, "Oh!" <laughs> <laughs> he puts in a glass, and he pulls water all over. Why it's recording, and it just doesn't break. That's brilliant. Very cool. What uh, can so can do like uh, what, you have some specs on it. A guy, and well, off the top of my head, I know it can go to dance ten meters underwater. Yes, that's really good. That's more impressive than. Yeah, and it can drop quite a few meters. And it can do yeah. pretty good. Uh, tech reasonable photos yeah, and yeah. good Videos, video recording yeah. as well because there's those comp- that company that makes those go cameras yeah go uh, yeah. no there's a full name for it yes um, i know exactly go, go hd go. cameras that the, all the all the extreme sports guys use and they're also also supposedly extremely rugged and, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, very very rugged and, big and also good quality. Uh, yeah, they do. That's their GoPro, dis- GoPro, 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 GoPro cameras. <laughs> they are designed to do shoot HD video <coughs> under yeah. water and when you're skiing down a slope and jumping out of airplanes and stuff like that. So yeah, if you're interested in that sort of stuff, it's not a stills camera at all. Though. It's yeah, just it's designed just video. for a video. Yeah, they they make them for mount, uh, mounting on the front of your mountain bike, bike like everything. Like yes, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I've just bought a, a a waterproof housing for my my little uh, Sony <laughs> camera. I bought the smallest, highest quality Sony camera I could get. Yeah, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. It shoots like uh, 14 megapixel, big optical zoom. It's awesome. <laughs> and uh, but I bought the the waterproof housing for it. 40 meters. It's rated up to. Hey, sure. look. Yes, I mean, so. the housing's big like this, yeah. but it's cool because it's got uh, it's got inserts for. A bunch of different cameras. Oh, so, so you the, can all actually, the controls and it and comes stuff. with them all. Yeah, exactly. So you just swap out the inners of this thing. It's just like a rubber piece that fits around the camera. Yeah. And then uh, you can swap what, it around. What make is it? Sony. Sony. Uh, the and camera is Sony. And the housing and the housing Sony. Sony as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And why? So obviously it only uh, takes why? Sony cameras. No, but Sony are very good. Why? Though. <laughs> very why? Dude, I'm moving <laughs> to Australia. He's going to go dive in. the Great Barrier Reef. He yeah. can go That's Great not Barrier 40 meters deep. Diving. We, we oh, did that yeah. when we went to Best India for diving. Yeah. Oh, so nice to mm. take the camera. Yeah, you know, I just thought, you know, the, the housing but wasn't Pretty much you can get priced. housings for most of the medium to upper range Sonys. Yeah. They're very good at producing uh, waterproof yeah. housing. And, and the quality of the accessories is really, really oh, good. Okay. So you must check it out. If you want to do something, you know, like that, and you're not going to buy a GoPro or something yeah. to do it. Like, look at Sony because the accessories are just very high quality. Just don't pack it because then they will come. At the hel- black helicopters will come and they will lock you. <laughs> <up>. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> such a bad reputation. <laughs> um, Olympus Tough, do you know what it costs about? It's about four grand, I think. Four grand. Okay, that's cool. Not, yeah, bad. Price. not bad at all. Uh, the, the reason I ask is because we actually reviewed a... We haven't actually published the review. We probably should. Um, <laughs> we, we, we reviewed a, a Toshiba camera that's well, it's claim to fame as you can take it underwater. Two meters. This yeah, thing goes 10. 10. But, 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 but the, the what was more impressive for me was that you could throw it and drop yeah. it. And it's yeah, yeah. This Toshiba, it. I mean, it's, it's hardy, but I mean, you can't throw it, I think. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I dropped more than that on this little setup, and all it can do is go into water. It can't be thrown around the room and stuff. Look, it takes it takes uh, full HD See, video on, and on stuff. On the RC, 2.5. Well, yeah, 2.5. I wonder good. where she There's found it. Two versions. Two versions. The one that goes... I think mm-hmm. three meters and the other goes 10. Ah, okay. So there okay, are yeah. two. Oh, yeah, there's big. two oh, different there's versions. Two. Make sure that's a 10 meter version. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we're not, we're not going to advertise these guys. But, uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are links in IRC. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're just going to move on from there a bit. Yep. Tim is getting antsy. 
No, 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 no. <laughs> do it. I'm just watching the time. Oh, we're okay. really halfway through the show. Yeah. Uh, good. The EU cookie law. Uh, mm. Stu, you and Jesus we had long discussions name. about this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's keep this one brief. I think. Okay, we'll go over it last time. Yeah. Uh, didn't okay, we speak so about this last week? We did mention we did. it. Yeah. Okay. The EU cookie law was supposed to come out now, around about now. Yeah. Mm. It's not going to come out because there's no way to enforce it. But it is force. It is enforcing third-party cookies only. So it's not going to break the website's functionality. Okay. Wait, wait. Mm. It's not going to log you in. It's no, intended. No, no. It's intended to do this. Okay. Mm. That it, all it is is if they want to track you somehow like, an like ad, yeah. Nielsen's like a, Google Analytics effective measure yeah, yeah. any ad, with ad uh, network or something like that that have Double to click. they yeah. have to get, get your you. permission to install a okay. third party cookie so they yeah. can track you okay that's where the EU law comes in so that's what it's intended to do that's what it's intended to yeah. do yeah um, once right. again it's a bit broad to encompass everything no. and until you know it's it's a usual worry is that some lawyer now comes around and says well I'm going to sue you because you've got normal cookies. Yeah, but they don't actually understand the difference between cookies and, and not... Uh, yeah, and the inverse <laughs> of that is also now, if the EU makes the law too specific, then these third-party guys might find a loophole. Exactly. Yes. So, so, luckily, <laughs> can you believe it from Microsoft, the new IE9 is going to have a don't follow me option. Yes. Yeah. Where it'll block third-party cookies. You mean like Firefox you mean like already like has? Script I block. <laughs> I didn't know. No, the script block block cookies, third-party cookies. Well, it just doesn't run the script. Yeah, I know. Well, then it just stops everything. Yeah. Yeah, but there but is a plugin for Firefox to block cookies. Block cookies I yeah. know, but it's a plugin. But yes, but from, right, four, no, no, it's from cool. four, they've built in. There's somewhere that you set a setting but saying don't follow me. But it's cool that they now the browsers are starting to take control yeah. over it, which I think is the best place to do it anyway. Yes, the problem is exactly. regulate Because really, I mean, come on. EU is now going to ban what? How are they going to control this? Are they going to put the websites now? They got to ship the websites to another country. So you know, if you don't, if you want to put third-party cookies on your website and you don't want to tell anyone about it, well, then where do you have to go? To Albania or the US? Yeah, yeah. So just put the in Guatemala. Oh, Guatemala. Yeah, or Fippen maybe host it down south, South Africa. Yes. A band with Daniel is not allowed yeah. cookies. Anyway, other we allowed cookies. We're allowed the cookies. Stu, the one thing about those do not follow things. Yes. It doesn't enforce it. It just says, this browser tells the website, I don't want you to follow No, me. this is a little bit different. This won't accept oh. the cookie. Okay, this it, one actually no, won't. No, this actually won't accept the cookie and it won't ever present it again. So it's, no It's like cookies. an awesome No, you can mode. choose what type. So if it's a first pass person, it's a, uh, if it's a first party cookie that's for the website, then the website, if it requests it, so the IP address requests it, it oh, will okay. present so, that right. cookie okay. to that cool. IP address. So for like logging in for, or yeah, you know, no, session no, yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. But if the ad, if some third party site tries to, inst to offer you your browser a cookie to for tracking purposes, your browser will refuse to accept it or if it accepts it, it will refuse to present it to any other website. All right, cool. Okay. So they're just so gonna move to JavaScript. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean yeah it, it's just it's just uh, a different I, I get what they're trying to do and the idea of it is it's going to be a little bit more visible to the users yeah so I it's going to be a browser option it's the same thing as pop-up blockers remember what the web was like without pop-up blockers yes okay it's the same type of thing now now the pop-ups are JavaScript naturally you yes, can see this on all your favorite blogs the guys want a pop-up ad and they pay good money for that pop-up ad and then the JavaScript just uh, of course I never go back to those sites no of course of course but it did help and yeah. this is the same thing. And it's and always going to be a... It's it's always it, be look, I must say, it race. also taught the guys if they go too intrusive, the guys will find ways and, 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 and make plugins to stop it. Yeah. Don't put something up on top of my content that I'm there to read. Mm. And don't give me surveys <laughs> on top <laughs> of my content <laughs> that I want to read. We, we have no choice. <laughs> um, yeah, just so that... Uh, yeah, but can said. you make it less obtrusive? We can't do anything about Nielsen. Nothing. But... Um, the, the, we, we, are, we are part, by the way, Nielsen is going the way of the dodo now. Uh, not, not globally, Nielsen is still very strong. But um, in South Africa, we are part of the DMMA, which I don't remember the expansion, but like the, look it up. Just Google mm -hmm. DMMA. Um, but it's a thing which most content, you know, digital media, digital mm. DM, the first DM is digital media. Digital media um, people belong digital to South Africa. Digital Media Marketing Association. Yeah. And the reason for that is um, in order to get advertisers in South Africa, you really do need to belong to the DMMA. The DMMA have recently said, we're uh, no more Nielsen's guys. We're switching to a new analytics provider called Effective Measure. Um, I think we've done briefly an article in this um, 
but yeah, the, the bottom line is we're switching to effective measure. It comes with a whole other set of pros and cons, yeah. unfortunately. So one of them is a uh, flash. If somebody's blocking third-party stuff or they run flash block, yes. um, then they've got this blocked flash icon in the middle of their Firefox window. Also, some survey or something that got blocked. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. We... Yeah well. yeah, well, it's something to... But anyway, I have to say, my broadband is the only uh, site that I, I allow uh, adverts to display on through my ad blocker. Our marketing department will... I, I, like to, I, like, I like to support the local guys. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, I, I turn ads off on Reddit. You know, like the sites mm. I really believe deserve the money. Yes, um, yeah. So yeah, I, I do as well, yeah. I do it on the ones I'm on often. So yes, exactly. slash dot, I know you guys is off. Google, strange enough, I turned off because... I turn off Facebook. Uh, no, no, sorry, turn on f- ad block to Facebook because no, every time I cannot I stand Facebook. those stupid freaking ads on Facebook. <laughs> sorry, those stupid flashy crap that comes. Yeah. Actually, the other day, someone at work had Facebook open. I'm like, dude, is that like a Facebook clone or something? What's going on there? And it's just because the ads are <laughs> so bad on it. It looks different, yeah. 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 I know one time I accidentally turned it off and I browsed yeah. the web for yeah, I was like, I turn- yeah. yeah. Anyway, anyway. <coughs> cool. Um, student, your story that you brought in, which was teaching via YouTube. Yeah, the Khan Academy. Yeah, um, very interesting. It's uh, pretty cool. It's pretty cool. So it's this guy, um, uh, Sal Khan, and he's just started. He started making videos for um, like his kids and stuff, and his f- kids' friends and that to teach them some maths and science things at school, and it kind of just exploded. And now there's 2,100 videos and 100 different exercises. And it's not just the video mm. the side as well. There's a lot of now that you can, it, you sign in with your Google account and that, and you can get, um, you can track your progress. But your parents can also link your account to it, and they can track, you can track your kids' progress. And things. Very and cool. And it, it starts basically, simple equations, like literally adding one plus one. Hey? There's a whole sequence of videos about how addition works, how subtraction works, and all that. R- right up from that to... Um, Inverse functions, then it starts to al- uh, to you know small high school algebra, uh, solving equations, solving rational equations, Pythagoras, that sort of stuff. Then you go into your um, arithmetic. Uh, well, sorry, there is a arith- sorry. The arithmetic was the first, but then it goes into algebra. Then you've got stuff like banking and money. So how how banking work? How treasuries work for governments? Um, you have free economy as uh, why target rates versus money supply. You know, mm-hmm. those type of topics oh, very for, cool. you know, for business economics type things, biology. Yeah, the, that kind of stuff, by the way, gets covered in our, in our, in our math education now, I see. There's a lot of business uh, acumen type stuff being yeah. handled in our, which, which, well, which we, don't, we didn't get to do. Uh, yeah. because oh. I know if you do admins, there's financial math and stuff like that. Yeah, no, I'm do doing it on our basic math courses different, now. Yeah. There, there's oh, very fun, cool. like some basic financial mathematics, calculating loan repayments, that sort of thing. Very good. Yeah, it's because, very yeah, I mean, this is, I mean, we know that South Africans... Uh, you know, d- tended to not handle debt uh, very yes. well, well, which is <laughs> why the, the legislation got put in place mm, and mm. stuff. And now it's been also included in. I mean, of the many failings of the modern education system, this they is one thing look, that was incorporated that was actually quite good. I, I think, think with yeah. the modern, they are trying. Yes. But it's just. Well, I. Yeah, that's, yeah. I'm not going to get into yeah. that yeah. right now. Yeah, but anyway, so then they deal with biology as well. So you've got evolution, natural selection, right up to the anatomy of the body, then individual sure. organs, which is quite cool. Then you calculus, introduction to limits, right up to. Um, secu- uh, what's it? Integral uh, integrals and differentiation and you know fourth year varsity stuff um, and yeah that's quite cool. They've got chemistry, cosmology and astronomy, uh, currency and economics, uh, developmental maths. That's for really really basic stuff. Hmm. I'm just going down the list here. Finance, more more serious finance uh, things, uh, yield curves and. Um, Oh, you know what's it? What's the, the the tax laws in the states for corporates, corporations? The Sarbanes-Oxley, Sarbanes-Oxley stuff. Oh yeah, it's like our um, differential equations, um, geometry, uh, history, IT and and uh, engineering. Um, Sounds lin- like a perfect thing to point your kids at one day. Linear mm. algebra, mm. Um, organic chemistry, uh, I hated physics. Organic chemistry. Physics, literally, from introduction to so motion much. to nuclear physics, uh, cool. and all the stuff in between. And you've they've got st- they've got stuff here on um, fluid dynamics, thermodynamics, uh, in the cosmology and stuff. That's that they've got you know dark matter expansion, you know, all that sort of. And they do all of this in only two thousand videos. 
Yes, some of them will just have one video, remember? It will be one video on a specific topic. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of exercises. Remember, it's not just videos. There's exercises that go with it, eh? Mm -hmm. So you'll have a vis uh, an exercise on projectile motion. Uh, uh, sorry, a video on projectile motion, and then there's 10 exercises on it. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, go through it. Statistics, trigonometry, venture capital, and capitalist markets. Um, How about logic? They do have stuff that that is falls under the computer science stuff. Yeah. No, I'm talking about actual um, what theology logic type yeah, well, thing. No, just it's just more more basic philosophical I think it, logical arguments. I uh, no, I didn't see anything. I think there. everybody like in school should be taught what ad hominem is and <laughs> <laughs> and how not to win arguments that way. That'd be great. So um, yeah, it's there's some cool stuff. All right. Very cool. cool. Very so, okay, go check it out. Um, and if you, yeah, that's the nice thing is they do start from the basics. So if you need to, all of a sudden in your job, need to know a lot, a bunch of linear algebra stuff again. So if you're doing, um, you know, transforming vector spaces or something like that, go check it out because it, it explains from the basics. So if you Which forgotten, I think I would need and, yeah, and so if to do some of that math. <laughs> some of the varsity stuff. Somebody was talking about some of the stuff and I realized it's, it's been a while. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. And I don't remember, <laughs> <laughs> like the vague memories are gone. So yeah, um, have a look at it. It's it's quite handy for certain things like that. Mm, cool. As I say, cool. the calculus is we 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 looked at a few other things and they, they, it really explains it quite clearly. So it's fun. <laughs> You're so not going to need any of wait, that. Wait, you can wave now. With my laser pistol. Okay. Cool. Yeah, the Ubuntu girls following oh, us. Okay. I don't know if you know on, on Twitter. All right. Cool. cool. Tell us to join the wait. RSC chat. Yeah, you can actually just go How to. Do I tell her to join? <laughs> she can just, just go to the website. Oh, where she's watching the video. There's a. Well, word you'll be listening, Sonia, so... There, there's a word <laughs> chat. Just click on it. Go um, click on chat, It pulls Sonia. up a separate window. Just type in her name and she'll be in the chat. It's a lot more fun. There's the guys busy chatting here all the time. <laughs> um, right, into this laser gun mm. topic. Uh, every week we seem to have a new laser. Oh, <laughs> laser popular. Th this gun is cool. If you have you seen the picture? No, no. It, it's it, very slick. It, very sci-fi. Very. Yeah. Um, it. And it was strong enough that the guy basically burnt... Through a razor blade. Yeah. Cool. Yo. That's Speaking of strong. razor blades, do you know? Okay, when <laughs> Jeez, lasers slick. were first invented, right? They were measured power in Gillette. Basically, how many razor blades you could burn through. Wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Gillette. Gillette. Yeah. <laughs> that is an awesome looking gun. It's cool, hey. Uh, real, cool. really. That's really slick. Um, somebody put a lot of work into that. It basically, it's powered off a capacitor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which you charge up, it's, it's got it's lipo batteries internally, yeah. Yeah, very, very small burst. It's a very yeah. short burst. I oh, know, it's, it's, it's down in the nanosecond yeah, range. Nano, yeah, nanosecond range. Um, um, but it, if it's strong enough to burn through a razor blade, it can do damage. Yeah, it's, it's, oh no, it'll, it'll blind you. Uh, if you it looks like something straight out of Mass Effect. But it's, it's awesome. It'll burn a hole in your eye. <laughs> it, it'll, yeah, it'll do damage, but it's, it's, it's quite fun. Unfortunately, yeah. it's also one of those single shot and then recharge for a while. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think you. Uh, like from it, demolition, demolition, you're using there. capacitors though. Yeah. So I mean, how long does it take to charge up the capacitor? Well, it, it depends how much current long. you can give it. Yeah. The yeah. more current. But how, you, you said it, it was running lipo batteries inside. Yeah. No. Basically, charge it's, it's, it's a, yeah. Charge the capacitor, then it dumps that uh, massive. Yeah. It one it into yeah. the into a laser diode. Mm. Massively overpowered it, and how quickly does it uh, does it recharge the capacity? They say about fifty shots off the lipos, and it takes it takes a bit of time to recharge. Okay, um, like a bit of time, a couple of seconds. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. About <laughs> Look, five ten capacitors. Seconds or so I don't know how, how no, no, yeah. 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 five <laughs> ten seconds in the video. Um, okay. Capacitors no. can charge very quickly. The problem is you need effectively another oh, yeah. capacitor <laughs> that can give power. Yeah, charge no, very quick. I mean, yeah. it's your current drawing no, your batteries no, 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 and yeah. things like that. So yeah. I was just I was just curious. But yes. um, you're gonna be upset if that thing shoots you, no matter where it shoots you. No, he says he shoots himself in the foot and stuff, and then it doesn't hurt. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't like drill through his foot. It just know, he, does. He shoot himself in the foot, and then he goes and shoots the gun. But it burns through a razor blade. Oh. Yes, but what it will do is when you shoot it in your hand, it ablates your skin. It just goes, pfft, and it gives you. Yeah. A, it just ablates the fraction of a top layer of your skin and it doesn't really do any damage. I don't want that to touch my nipple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're yeah, talking about topic. Thanks <laughs> for that, Barry. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're going to shoot a guy in the heart. That's where you shoot him. Yes, yeah, you're Barry? not going to go through. It's not going to penetrate very deeply. I know, but that's what I'm saying. I still don't <laughs> want to be <laughs> shot in the nipple. <laughs> we <laughs> don't want Take to know. We just check it out. <laughs> just saying, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> but it is it, the coolest part of it is, okay, it's lasers, but the design of the guy in it. It yeah, is pretty. Cool. It's well it's a lot of time. Out of Mass Effect, exactly. Yeah. 
Or a Hollywood blockbuster prop or something like oh, that. Yeah. It's like it belongs in Demolition Man. No. Especially if it needs to charge up. Yeah. It makes that buzzing sound. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I love it. <laughs> like an sound. old flash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, onto the next one is uh, finally you can actually pile things with water. Okay. I should have, I should have changed this the headline <laughs> because it's not really. No, it's, it's actually. Well, it's, it's kind of. It's, yeah. it's crystals and you add water. Yes. Yeah, yeah, sure. But well, it, it's a um, fuel cell. At that point, it the is a fuel cell, chemical reaction basically. occurs and it basically Generates. liberates the hydrogen. And then it runs a fuel cell. Runs a fuel cell. So you can convert the hydrogen back into electricity. The yeah. cool thing is, is they've got, of course, almost infinite shelf life. Yeah. So the batteries could sit there on your shelf for years and years and years. All you need to do in an emergency situation or anything is pour any liquid water into it. And the batteries will fire up. And um, yeah, that was the other cool thing. They said, the said it can be salt water, yeah. dirty water. water it doesn't, oh, doesn't care. It doesn't matter. It can be any, basically and any water. Theoretically, the water that from the fuel cell at the end of it, it should actually be pure. And it mm. should be drinkable. So you can drink it. Yes. Yes. Perfect for the zombie apocalypse. Perfect. I'm buying <laughs> six. <laughs> yeah. And well, they are going to actually be released. This is something, a technology that looks like it's actually going to happen. So do you, do you open it up and scoop some water in and then close it up? It looks like that, yes. No, there's a yeah. video well, of the more you don't have a powder. So every now and again, you must be just top up your battery. Okay. So you'll have your fuel cell and you just pour some powder and some water. Another in. nice thing yeah, is it's, it's sodium cool. silicate. Uh, if I, sil silicide. Yeah. So it's NASI. So it's they basically it's so, so salt. They can yeah. make it with salt and, so, and, and sand. sand. <laughs> so it's really it's very safe. The yields are supposedly are very good. Environmental the, friendly. Uh, the yield is very we'll good of the, the. So there's not a lot of byproducts yeah. in the process of making um, uh, NASI. The actual, oh. And it, it, there's very few byproducts, or yeah. if any. The thing I looked. I at, think they said no no harmful byproducts. Yeah. So which yeah. is good. Yeah. The thing I looked like uh, looked at it, it looked like a, you know like a, those those rechargeable battery things decks that you you know put double A's and and D cells in to charge them except obviously you put water in it and then you attach a USB cable yes and you charge basically it's designed for anything that connects via USB that's what it looks yeah. like yeah and it's as I say uh, the, the nice thing is it's the shelf life is really good on, well it's it's an emergency battery pack I mean it's the thing is it's not rechargeable eh? so just yes, remember yeah, once that, uh, what, when, when the crystals are, are, are when, used they've react, when they've reacted with the water it's a, that's it okay. so you'll get a cartridges of crystals that will obviously plug into some sort of um Fuel cell backpack because the fuel cell will be reusable mm. uh, until the membranes eventually. I wonder how much it'll cost plug. because I'm wondering if we can actually. I mean, how effective is this? Can this eventually replace? Can fuel cells like this eventually replace? Well, the problem is now? the problem is it's not rechargeable. Yeah. So yeah. it'll never. Uh, so you have to keep topping it up. You have with to keep so topping up with the cartridges. Yeah. At some in, at but some if point. they're cheap enough, then the idea is that you must have a look at some of these alcohol-powered fuel cells. That's also another idea because you're just basically. Plug a fuel, a uh, plug an alcohol canister on the back of it, mm. and it's. Mm. Or you get ones that runs up meths as well. Yeah, no, well, it's alcohol in it. Yeah. Well. So that's that's that would might be a little bit more efficient, but I'm out of well, charge well, of my laptop. I was looking at a beer. Well, <laughs> they say the amount of energy for per density of alcohol or actually petrol or something like that, hmm? compared to like lithium ions, is incredible. Oh yes, yeah. You know, no, for the yeah. same size and weight, you can power something considerably longer. Yes. Oh, but it's a cool idea, and it's it's. I thought it was, a, and it, as I say, it's a, it seems to be a technology that is actually maybe going to materialize. That you yeah, might be able to finally. find easily. Because wasn't it about four years ago we were supposed to start getting the fuel cells inside our, yeah, our laptops? But it came to yeah, but it's manufacturing uh, issues. What, what and we it's are, wasn't there like a danger to having a fuel cell, like in a car during an accident? No, or the, like the that? hydrogen storage is a bit of an issue. That's the because biggest um, issue. it's yeah. it's not just the it's not explo it's not the explosive part because I mean. You can store petrol. Yeah, I mean, the we're problem we're is, is it's got to be stored under incredibly high pressures. Yeah. Okay. That's where the explosive issue comes in. If you rupture it, the damn thing explodes. explodes. Not physical hydrogen explosion, but just the pressure you're storing into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because um, so you have to yeah, have get the right density. Uh, tanks yeah. and stuff. So, so you've got to keep it cold if you want to store it. And that's the thing. You've got to store it cryogenically as well. Yeah. So keep to keep it liquid. Yeah. It's not so just pressure. Like you've got a lot of practicalities. That's the issue. Yes. There was a lot of cool stuff where they were storing hydrogen on carbon plates. That's the thing. Is it with nano nanotechnology or nano the carbon nanofibers? Yeah. Yeah. Now what you can actually store is you dissolve almost dissolve the hydrogen into a solid mm. okay okay you don't need to store it under pressure high pressure then How and do you liberate <coughs> it? that's the problem is you have to normally heat it up to liberate it 
which is not necessarily too bad an issue because normally your hydrogen fuel cell heats up. So you can start it that way. So you might have a small electric heater to get it going. Then the heat generated from your fuel cell would heat your, your fuel tank up and liberate and more charge hydrogen. And charge your, charge your starter. Exactly. Yeah. So there, there is options there. But the problem with that is your, density, your, fuel, your, your storage densities are not nearly yeah. as good. There was other guys working with carbon fiber fuel tanks. Which yeah, were like a yeah. woven carbon yeah. fiber, and when the pressure much higher pressure, and that's then the they, thing, and they then change shape, they change shape, yeah. and they 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 kind of they are a bit, you know, they puncture proof and things like that. But if it does start burning, what happens is the way it expands lets out the gas in a controlled fashion, yeah. and you never get to the high pressures that the whole damn thing explodes. Mm -hmm. So because it, it also can't rip apart because the fibers are woven in a. In a way, yeah, it's, it's, it's like rip stop like and things uh, like that. Yeah. So there, there's lots of ways, but it's, it's again, this is you know pie in the sky type stuff. I mean, also the university really, lab. We're used to the safety of petrol engine stuff, which safety, safety, well, no, but relative no. safety. No, no, yeah, it's yeah, also absolutely. it's compared to where they are now. It's taken how many years to get to where they are now? The problem is, is no, but that's it's what I'm hard saying. to get a petrol car to explode. The, the hydrogen and all the rest of it, all that storage in yeah. 20 Oscar years hippies. of being used will be safe and perfect and all the rest of it. It's just going to take a while okay. to get there. There is two big issues with it. Okay, First of all is the distribution of hydrogen. Mm. It's how do you, you know, you can't fill up your car. So there's the catch-22. You need the cars on the road to have the petrol the fuel mm. stations. You don't have the fuel stations because there's no <coughs> cars. And then... As you said, the actual getting over the public fear of because they see hydrogen, they think of the Hindenburg exploding. They think that's what's going to happen <laughs> to their car. So yeah. it's to get over that <laughs> that fear, so different, irrational yeah. fear of. You say it's hard to get a car to explode. Apparently, this is according to stunt uh, people who, who organise stunts for Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. And and they're like, you know, actually, and according to old teachers who used to be protesters back in the day. I have, a, I have a small story for you. Petrol is also not. It's not explosive. Right? explosive. No, no, no. Of course, unless you vaporize. You need to no, do the vaporization. Yeah. Yeah. But it still burns. Oh, yes. It yeah, burns. it burns. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so, so as long as you've got oxygen in the mix, it burns. Um, so you say it's hard to, get, to make a car light on fire or whatever or blow up. A, a friend of mine. Like shooting at it with bullets, for instance. That's not no, a good no, way to that's get a car difficult. But anyway, I've got a story for you nonetheless. A friend of mine Seeker. was at a... a <laughs> was at a concert. A, at a, you know, a weekend getaway. Yeah. Concert. And concert, you know, <laughs> not a concert, but like a Opie like a Copie. festival, like like, Opie Copie. like Opie Copie, but it was uh, it was a different one. Anyway, so he his wood was all wet because it had been raining for a couple of days, and he decided that it would be a good idea to pour petrol on his wood, so he could get it going and maybe it would dry <laughs> out. But he didn't have a canister; all he had was a siphon tube, and he siphoned directly out of his old Escort. Let's see where this is going. Straight onto the fire. <laughs> 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 that, by the way, is the only way to get a car to explode. Just to line it at the tank. So well then done. The, then the well tank the only way. <laughs> and because while he was trying to get it going, there was loads of oxygen in the pipe, it went woof. It just went woof. <laughs> straight into the tank and went ba boom. <laughs> oh, well. And it had probably been standing and in the I, I guess No, no, but yeah. probably also that tank was really maybe had holes or something in it to get no, enough air. Yeah. <laughs> very nice, very nice. Because yeah, that's nice. was the other thing that was with Mythbusters. They saw if the tank sealed properly oh it doesn't uh, the fire burns up and then just yeah stops burns, keeps burning there with yeah. a bit of fuel but uh, uh, you know you've seen those videos with the the people the people filling up their cars and then the cars catch fire oh yeah oh my god I mean, those people are idiots <laughs> because first of all they standing they, they say they're filling the car it, it it catches fire so instead of just letting go of the leaving the nozzle in right it's doing its thing it's not going to do running back getting the fire extinguisher putting it up no they keep their hand on it Pull it out. <laughs> now you've got a flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever seen the Zoolander movie? Yes, yeah. <laughs> and they're all like, ah, cool. it's All right, I'm going to move, move us along again. Um, <laughs> I love okay, it. Okay, the next topic was your Solana, the Cape Town MP3 experiment. I'm going to show, we've got some of the video on. Um, the screen now, so you can, do you want to talk about it? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I actually heard about it because the, the guy who creates the MP3 experiments, Charlie Todd, um, he Hello, also is the guy who created the No Pants You're Ride and the Cow Train. Mm -hmm. And I was one of the people who got arrested. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did oh, you? Well done. <laughs> nice. nice on you. <laughs> so when I in did a bit of research and found out he's coming to South Africa to run his MP3 experiment for the first time in Africa, I like decided, oh, I have to be part. I flew down to Cape Town. Basically what it is is you just download an MP3 and 
and synchronize your watch and go to the designated place and hit play at three o'clock on the Sunday, the 20th mm. of February, whatever. Okay. And then this guy, Steve, tells you what to do. And, <laughs> follow, and you follow the do instructions. What he does. Yeah. yeah. And there were yeah. about so 400 cool. of us, and I had the best oh, yeah. fun with 400 strangers. I, I can sort of see had. from the video that I had up um, the guys are moving around all like together. Yeah. So, like, you know, you like say jump. Flash and because it, yeah. yeah. And because it's, you, it's always like a slight delay, obviously, when anyone presses, when he says jump, you see, you, you see this crowd, everyone jumping at like different time it's quite bizarre <laughs> but with and enough freeze. Freeze. Awesome. these people and they'll actually move it at and quite synchronous yeah. time oh. and i don't know how they organized a helicopter to come over us because we did a human um dartboard so oh, different okay. colored t-shirts yes. and you got all the reds together then the greens and then the yellows or whatever and they actually film it there's a um, helicopter that flew over us and yeah. it looks amazing from out there and we ended off with a balloon fight I've never laughed and screamed <laughs> and hit so many people with my balloon. Then <laughs> <laughs> we <laughs> need to organize awesome uh, another that flash mob cool in Pretoria. Actually. That's very yeah, cool. Yeah, no, we do at some point. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so he's also did the next um, weekend. He did because it was part of his here for the uh, design and Darbe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we talked mm -hmm. there. He did a, a freeze. So freeze. yeah. So oh, we're going to. Yeah, yeah just a public flash place mob, like any, everyone freezes. Yeah, original just freeze for idea five minutes. I've seen, I've seen them at like the New York subways yeah. and things like yeah. that, yeah. where they get thousands. Where did they do it? Freezing. They did it um, at the Victoria Waterfront in Cape okay. Town. So I wasn't there. I yeah. didn't fly down for that one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's just but, a flash mob. but I decided, yeah, my friend Mangizi and I, we decided we're going to actually organize a freeze here in Joburg. So if anyone couple. wants to take part, you better follow me because mm -hmm. there's been a couple people. Uh, already. Uh, like at uh, Menon, there yeah, was so one. I was involved a freeze. in yeah. the first one. Yeah. No, we did. We did a. We did a, a Mexican wave. So oh no, but there was a freeze in Menon as well. Was there a freeze yeah. in Menon? Yeah. Because the first one, the first flash mob. I don't know if it was the first one in the country, but it was the first one in the Pretoria area. Yeah. We even got in the Pretoria news and all that yeah. sort of stuff. We organized it via Facebook. Uh, it was at our previous commune. Mm. Uh, Llewellyn and Marius yeah. organized it. Yeah. And um, we did a, a Mexican wave in Menlin. So mm -hmm. around, the, cool. around the around um, the lifts, uh, you know, in that in the auditorium, that big yeah. open area space yeah, where the, the food court is, yeah. we did around there. Awesome. And the security guards didn't have a clue what was going on. Yeah. <laughs> and they all just stood there talking on their walkie talkies and everyone's <laughs> going crazy. And eventually, once they decided, no, these people need to go, it was over and just everyone disappeared. Yeah, yeah. but there was, a, there was a freeze in Menland as well. Was there? Yeah, and then there was a uh, there was another freeze in South Africa somewhere. And then there was also a pillow fight in... Uh, in How uh, do you guys hear about these things? And I don't... Facebook. Like yeah. Facebook. Facebook. There's a whole group flash you can follow. Flash mob. South African flash mob. Uh, but there was a there was a big pillow fight in, in Hatfield. Hatfield. Hatfield Square. And, yeah. and there was another one at, I think, an abandoned building. And those guys eventually got sort of chased away by security guards. <laughs> uh, okay. and, and you hear about the amazing race one where part of the race all had to meet behind um, Nelson Mandela Square and we had black placards and we came onto the square saying his head's too small, his head's too small and by the time security they really thought there was a strike happening but yeah. it was over and we just... Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'm dropping, I hope this is the group ID, uh, there's the Pretoria flash mob in the uh, RC. Okay. Oh. I'm just add it into the wave as well, just for <coughs> later. So we've got oh it. yes, yeah. I see. Morris is still is still the secretary general. Yeah. <laughs> of the flash. Mob. It's not very active anymore. No, though. no, it's not. But this was quite big a while ago. Then it sort of yeah. died out. For we a need while. to do another one. Yeah, There's so many things I want to do before I leave. It was quite fun. Yeah. All right. Um, okay, we're just gonna go. We've hit an answer. We're just gonna go over the last couple of things qu quickly. Uh, Jan, did you want to talk about SourceForge? Sure. Um, we ten it. Um, which is the, the, the uh, network that provides services to a lot of South African universities. Tertiary education. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. tertiary yeah. education. You have to, that, that's a requirement, um, because Tenet actually provides very, very cheap bandwidth mm. to universities. So this is, uh, this is the thing. We, we were actually at iWeek last year, which is a thing organized by ISPA, and um, the Tenet was talking about the rates at which they acquire international and national bandwidth, <laughs> and <laughs> the ISPs sitting at iWeek went, how do I become a Tenet uh, mm -hmm. reseller <laughs> and they said yeah sorry it's just for universities so um, anyway but Tenet are, are the guys who put up Ubuntu mirrors and that sort of thing they run mirror.ac.za yeah, they yeah. run the official Ubuntu mirror yeah. if you go to ZA uh, it's like ZA.ubuntu.mirror.com yeah. or something like that uh, ZA.mirror.ubuntu.com or something like yeah. that no, no, that results to, to them mirror.ac.za yeah yeah sure you, you can get, get all but the, the but the official South African mirror resolves to mirror.ac.za okay yes it yeah. actually resolves to that yeah. server and um, anyway so they've put up a SourceForge mirror yep so what that means is not they don't mirror the whole site unfortunately that's not possible the way yeah, I understand and they also don't mirror any of the like the, the 
console access and the version control yes, and all that that's unfortunately all still over international but if you want to download something you'll need international access to get to the source for source forge website or if somebody just shares a link with you that's cool too to directly to the mirror but you you have to get, have international access to get to the source forge website then from there everything is local bandwidth mm -hmm. which means even if you you know even if you're not trying to save costs it'll go a lot faster yeah. um, and it'll be at a at much less cost to local isps yeah. If the if peering works properly, and it's and it works. Yeah. I tried it today. I was downloading Tortoise SVN, yeah. and it's there. This link, this download is sponsored by Tenet, yeah. oh, okay. and it comes That's from the cool. South yeah. African server at like flat out two hundred k yeah. a second. Yeah. You know what? I've got a bigger big problem with in uh, South Africa at the moment, with bandwidth wise, is they still have your merged first company. So you buy a three gig uh, account from oh, yeah. from Telcom, for Who, instance. I don't even do that anymore, but yeah. I but I'm, I'm just saying for everybody else, you know what I mean? Um, it's all great and well that we're getting more services local, but then don't charge my local stuff to my international, uh, to my international yeah. part portion. of my yeah. portion of my bandwidth. Charge that to my local portion. Yeah, instead, it's up to you. Um, the only way to make that work is to actually have two accounts. Yes. So you have to have an international yeah, local, local account and, and your own yourself. router. Yeah. And not just any old router. You, yeah. Like you'll have to get a router and flash it with proper software. Well, not, and not you get like an expensive, expensive no, router. No, no most basic ones router. can do routes. Yeah. Okay, um, right, those basic, will do the basic Microtech router and then get hold of you the get wag. hold of all the uh, the routes yeah. and there's a we route have a there's a root table yeah. for all the south african and routes if, if you've and got linux just use the country yeah, there's ways IP to do it, tables. But yeah. we shouldn't have to do this yes, yes. yes. why, why do we have to hack around it when it should just be working at the yeah. ISP yeah. level exactly it's just anyway, a way to make more money how much did they me? say what 14 gigs eh 14 terabytes sorry. 14 terabytes yeah th this was a cool stat they pulled down 14 terabytes of of data in three days yeah. Yeah. 50 58 mega second i think it works out at it's yeah. ridiculously well fast. i've got a mate on um on uh, the tenet and i don't know what their international pipe is like yeah. going out but he can pull down a, a, an international http download at over 10 megabytes a second so he's they've got 100 megabit lan in their uh, yes, in, yeah. uh, at the CSR, that's where it is. Okay. And um, he can pull down an international HTTP download at over 10 megabytes a second. <laughs> so, like, flat out what his card yeah. can do. But, yeah, so, no, it's cool. I see they're expanding the storage and they're going to actually go with this now. But Yeah, but they store things like the uh, what looks like... It seems to be the Human Genome Project. They yes, actually yeah, store they the Human Genome Database. Yeah. Um, okay, they have cool. a bioinformatics database, everything yeah. on that server. So while, um, and because that was my first question to him when he told me, yeah, they've got 60, they've got 40 terabytes of storage in this thing, they're going to upgrade it to 69 terabytes. I'm like, but the whole source for is just 14. What do you need the rest for? He's like, then explain. No, we, we also do the Ubuntu releases and the Ubuntu yeah. archive. And we do FreeBSD, and we have all these other academic. They do Arch Linux. Yeah. If oh, you go, if yeah. you go, That's if you go I get straight, all my Arch Linux stuff from if you go straight to mirror.ac.za, the official site, it gives you a listing of all the subdomains. Mirror, yeah. So it's like Ubuntu.mirror.ac.za and all those, and it gives you a list of exactly what they're mirroring. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's quite cool. Yes. And it's the speeds are pretty good too. Yeah, yeah very you know, good. No, very impressive and very Doesn't well done for Tenet yeah. because apparently yeah. it wasn't. Uh, um, the, the, the senior support officer, um, uh, Len Lotz, I think, um, he he apparently worked quite hard to get this off the ground. Yeah. Um, like it's it not just, you don't just go to SourceForge and, and go, hey, I'm going to, you know, just, you know, w get your, <laughs> yeah. your repository. Yeah. Your repository. Um, yeah. It's contractual things yeah. involved, all kinds yeah. of things. Mm -hmm. And I know, I don't know how, what public knowledge this is, but uh, they do also have a Google mirror. They've got yes. Google servers. Yeah, yeah. Go Google, Google cache. cache. Yeah, ten yeah. yeah. I know Google li likes to keep the, the their yeah. global caches quiet, but it's yeah. like the worst case kept secret yeah. in the world. <laughs> You're right. You so can normally find out. It's very easy. Th there's there's two. Yeah. I'm stop anyway. right there. Cool. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm no, gonna no, move no. There, there's, no but there's more than two in South Africa. Okay. Google caches. There's there's like there's about four or five now. Google caches officially on different uh, networks. Networks. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm going to move us into our last topic for tonight, uh, which was the stew, nuclear... Yeah, Japan stuff. Okay, the guys, what they're all complaining about with the, about with the yeah, level four. Okay. So now the problem comes in. The news has absolutely blown this all out of proportion. Yeah, and totally. It's incredibly sensationalistic. And <laughs> you've got yeah. France telling their citizens to leave Japan because the whole country is going to melt into a <laughs> radioactive ball into the sea. Yeah. Okay, so just go check those links out. Um, it's from the MIT Nuclear Advisory Board and things like that. And they just explain things in a little bit more technical detail and what it actually means. And they've got 
Do they um, explain what went wrong exactly? They explain some of the stuff, what went wrong, what they can find out and what they can verify. And also they say, would, would say, it's just, hypothetically, this is what would have, ha what we think has happened because this is the type of reactor it is and all the rest. Yeah. This is the safety procedures. So <coughs> this is probably what would have happened, but they can't verify it. And it just, it gives you a bit more in-depth detail than you know a bunch of reporters running around saying that yeah. the end is nigh and the whole the, thing is exploded. The problem is, you know why they they throwing it out of proportion as well is like in the states, for instance, they have to it's law to they have to have the containment. Uh, yeah. um, uh, but in Japan, it? it's just but, as good. But Japan, they don't have any no, containment. No, dude, they've got the double containment. They've board. got they've they are the in containment a, domes. Yes, they don't have they any do, of that. Of course, Gary, this is they are in an earthquake zone. It is no, the, no, no, I know they are the world's most reliable and safest reactors. Also, they're so I'm not saying they're not safe. No, they are. But they're very safe. Like, Barry, they are as they are international. They are up to and probably exceeding international And, and they, they do get checked and all the rest of it. Sorry, I don't think you know, I realize what I'm saying here. The Sorry, containment I'm not, I'm not saying they don't no. have containment at all. I'm saying is the Americans watching this, throwing it out of proportion, are not seeing a dome oh, yeah. over the top. <laughs> they seeing a square building with the roof. Yes, that's off. Yeah. sorry. Okay, that's what yes. I'm trying to say. No, underneath the square building with the roof yeah. off, there's the containment vessel. Sorry, I, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm just and saying. All that blew the roof off was they had to vent the hydrogen somewhere yeah. that was building up. Yeah. They vented it into the containment building, and yes, yeah, something sparked and blew up the building. Well, and, that, and they sort of knew there was a calculated risk. risk and they knew yeah. it was going to happen, and that's why it happened three times. And also, if you look at the, the incident, it's, it's number four, which is uh, local consequences only. Yeah. No international. I must actually get these. There's, there's, there's a, a whole bunch of things. I mean, there's there's a graph floating around, supposedly from the national, from the Australian weather and no national weather service, which shows you know seven. Oh, it's at five thousand seven hundred millisievert per day radiation in America. I mean, that'll kill you quite quickly. Mm, yeah. And it's not even. You will not. They're not even detecting. They're detecting slightly elevated levels of background in Tokyo. They're not even detecting yeah. it anywhere else. Well, something I don't understand, and maybe this is because, like, I, I, I've done my fair share of trolling, um, mm -hmm. but what I don't understand about an internet troll who does something like this, I mean, it's obviously a troll. Yeah, yeah. it's a troll. Um, but, but why why would you try to so panic? Would you get a kick out of seeing yeah. Some all, guys all just panic? Get, yes. They do. I mean, it's and dude, the stupid. problem is the news agencies pick no. this up. They don't do their checks because it's got the Australian... A logo on it for the the weather service. It's got the logo on it. They don't do checks. They don't phone the guys there. What do they mm. do? They put it on TV. Yeah. And they say yeah. in ten days time, America is going to be glowing <coughs> green. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, come on, that's not helping things. No. no. <laughs> I was watching. I was uh, reading a blog today of a guy that actually went into Chernobyl. Um. Yeah. He went on a tour. Yes. A tour you can go on tour. Yeah. No. No. I know. Yeah. But he he took his meter with him and he was doing stats on showing you like at different points what. How many times more than London's standard yeah. radiation level was? It was really interesting, and he was just giving stats on. You know, I can't remember what the measurement is, but if you have, if you're exposed to four, whatever's yes. over an hour period, or four in, or no, 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 it's not even that. If you're in, exposed to one every fifteen minutes, like Curie's. Yeah, it's they measure it in milliseconds. Yeah, okay. what it, whatever it is. But if you're exposed to four, that's a death. Uh, yeah. You know, death. Yeah, yeah. and how they they were just showing you the different readings. Um, and obviously they were measuring it in micro. Yes. Uh, yeah. And so in, and at the different points, and then they were giving you the the latest stats that are still in Chernobyl's, like uh, Chernobyl from the actual right next to the reactor, yeah. and then right uh, in the at control the room. And the different, I mean, they're still sitting at, uh, when it first went off, it was 300 and something. And now it's still sitting at like 38. Yeah. We're not talking about micro now. We're talking about the and four. It's, that it's very, me. very, but it's a completely different situation. Oh, and this is what people are saying. It's a completely, different. Different. Oh, it's completely yeah. different situation. They, 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 they hear the word remember. meltdown and they see okay. Chernobyl meltdown. They oh, look, I must things. actually Chernobyl just meltdown. Just the, lid of the, the lid of the reactor blew yeah. off. Yeah. The reactor caught fire and burned in air for several days. Yeah. Okay, is a completely different thing to what they ha what has happened in Japan, where they think that maybe the zirconium fuel rods might have melted a little bit on the tops where they were exposed to. And then they they pump seawater in, which will, will yeah. coat it and so stop any radiation leaking it's as well. An issue, and yes, the guys are really working hard and they're fighting for it, and it's probably a really crappy job to try get it solved. But come on, just. It's, yeah. not, it's not an international yeah, problem. It's, yeah. Sorry, just a funny stat that I just want to mention about that blog that I read. Um, the, the Russian government pays uh, people, obviously professionals, to go in because they're still maintaining it. Oh, yes, yeah, they so have on. to, yes. Yeah. And um, 
the, the people they work right on the reactor that they are still doing work they can only work uh, on the reactor at the site for two minutes at a time right so they fly in they drop for two minutes they do what they need to do and they get out right they get paid 10 times the the um the average salary for two minutes work in a whole month how cool is that Yes, but who yeah. wants to go in there? But, <laughs> yeah, you're but shortening anyway, your you life. Only, you're only allowed to work for two minutes yeah. throughout the month. Okay, but sure. coming back to the the stuff that's happening in Japan. Sorry, yeah, I just thought it was a cool stat. If you read the read the 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 way the where the um what the radiation levels were, hmm? at the worst it seemed it was one thousand seven hundred milli of microsieverts. Okay, yeah. uh, that is about equivalent of a chest X-ray, a day. So you, it, it's equivalent to getting one, if you work there for a day. It was the equivalent of getting one chest X-ray, which mm. is um, almost, which is pretty close to what you get as a tr on a transatlantic flight. Yeah, so yeah. And it's it's. All right. But um, they've evacuated that area. But it's a precaution. Cool. No, no, of course. Yeah. Cool. They, what I'm saying is that, that they've <laughs> evacuated that area to the same extent as Chernobyl. Not quite. No. Not Thirty quite. K kilometers. It's yeah. twenty kilometers. What? Well, okay. Yeah. So and it's close. It's <laughs> it's it's, it's it, the thing is it's there is no. Um, it's a safety precaution. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the Japanese are safety precautions just to like in closing. Yeah. If it like the Japanese if if anything this disaster has shown us it's the Japanese are incredibly overcautious oh, and yeah. it has oh, saved yeah. lives. Yeah. Yes. So if it wasn't I mean, where else in the world will will a country get hit with the the prequakes it got hit, get hit with a nine magnitude earthquake, get hit with eight magnitude aftershocks and a yeah. massive tsunami and 16,000 people are maybe dead. Yeah, I it's mean, you crazy. you look at the, the tsunami, for instance, that hit uh, Thailand. Yeah. You talking about well, hundreds of thousands, two hundred fifty thousand thousand people. But in one comparison. thing, just coming back to this, the radi the reactors were not damaged by the earthquake. Yeah, no, it was tsunami. damaged by the tsunami. Yeah. yeah, and what caused it was the reactor shut down completely correctly by the looks of it. Is the fuel rod uh, the the control rods came in worked perfectly, shut down the reactor fine. The problem is the tsunami came and it took out the diesel generators. Yeah. Which yeah. took out the, which then they had to switch over to battery backups to run the and cooling the systems. Yeah. The batteries failed and they couldn't get the generators started because they're full of seawater. And then yeah. also, what happened? The whole cooling system failed well, because, because of that. they and overheated. Then they had problems and, and then they couldn't cool it. Again. Compounded, compounded yeah, problems exactly. with aftershocks and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But just to but say one thing though, if I know it's a shit thing to happen to a country, but if it's going to happen to a country, it's probably best to be Japan because they're the most prepared for it. Cool. But anyway. All right. With that, we're going to end the show. <laughs> <laughs> He's been trying to end it for the last yeah, 10 no, minutes. I check this. <laughs> no, I'm trying to get our shows just... Yeah, it's... Not... not, not uh, we we almost we got to give them the whole story. Otherwise, they don't feel complete for the week. <laughs> cool. Yes, Barry. It's, it's them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The people. Cool. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Talana, for joining us. Oh, thank thanks you. for having me here. Uh, yeah, once fun. again, where can people get you? Twitter? Twitter is Talana. Uh, websites uh, one magic and go buy a shirt please <laughs> <laughs> all the cool. details are on my blog yeah thank you Jan uh, oh, my broadband and uh, at Exel Barry Reed um, at Barry Rido Stuart Allen at at Stu underscore Z -A. Z -A. I remember yep. it at this time ah, and yeah. myself Tim Hawk at Tim underscore Hawk right from all of us thank you very much cheers Bye. cheers everyone see you next week right on. get your geek on <laughs>